I've often heard it said that self-care is the best health care. The only problem with that is oftentimes in our lives, that is the one thing that we forget the most. And it really impacts our ability to lead as well as live productive and happy lives. Hi everyone, Chris Natsky here with Black Belt Leadership Speaking and Coaching with your Mind of a Champion Tip of the Week. So we're going to talk today about self-care. You know, during the course of this uh, Facebook Live series, you'll often hear me talk about the importance of service, being able to uh, identify with the things that we love to do the most in our lives, our gifts, being able to go out and use those gifts and serve others. And when you put those two together, it is really the recipe, I think, for an amazing life. But the, the challenge is, is that when we're being of service, we're not doing it um, at the expense of ourselves. We're actually doing it from the overflow. And when we do that, that's where happiness comes from. However, when we're doing it just for the sake of giving and not giving back to ourselves, that's when we get depleted. That's when we get tired. That's when we get sick. That's when we get resentful. So, you know, it makes me think of one of the, um, one of the things one of my teachers told me a long time ago. He said, Chris, you have to take care of yourself so you can help take care of others. Take care of yourself so you can help take care of others. So what does that mean and how does that impact us? Well, you know, one of the things that I think I've really come to know is that a full heart can only give fully. If we are trying to give from anything less than that, we're doing it at the expense of ourselves. And one of the great examples of this is the classic book, I think, The, Habits, the, ha the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And in it, Stephen Covey talks about this concept of the emotional bank account. The emotional bank account and basically what that means is is that when you're in relationship with someone else every time you do something positive in the relationship you make a deposit in the bank account and every time you mess up make a mistake you make a withdrawal in the bank on the bank account and the idea there is that you want to have more deposits into the bank account than uh, withdrawals so that you can maintain a healthy relationship and, and I absolutely agree with this but the thing that's always been curious to me when I've read that is that it doesn't speak about being in a relationship with ourselves. Being able to make those positive deposits to feed our souls, to help us to rest, to help us grow spiritually, to help us heal emotionally. What are those things? So my question for you is, what are the self-care activities that you like to do and that maybe you haven't been doing as of late and you could incorporate back into your life? to make sure that you're balanced and you can give from a full heart. So I've got three ideas for how you can, uh, how we all can, can do this. And quite honestly, I'm the first one to admit I can do a better job on this as myself. So what are the three qualities of self-care self, uh, self -care that we can enact upon to really make sure it enriches our lives? Well, the first one is, is I encourage uh, all of you, I do this with my clients, is to make a list. Make a list of the self-care activities you love to do. Now, let me make a distinction here. It's not the ones you think you should do or the ones you have to do because scientific studies will show that if you are embarked on an activity you feel you have to do, the chances of you doing that long term are pretty low. But if you find something that you love to do, walks in nature, meditation, uh, reading great books, whatever that is from a self-care standpoint for you, getting a massage. If there are things that you love to do and you or you enjoy doing, you're more apt to do them consistently. So make that list of the things you love to do from a self-care standpoint. Number two is schedule those activities. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, here's what I know is that nature abhors a vacuum. And when there's space on our calendar, it will, if we don't put something in it, the universe will find a way to put something in it ourselves. You know, just think about the last time you committed to do something, maybe from a self-care standpoint, but you didn't put in your calendar and all of a sudden you got a phone call or a customer called you or your kids needed you for something. And all of a sudden that went away and it got pushed away. You see, when you schedule those activities in, our cal in your calendar and you anchor them there and you build things around it, you're not only serving yourself, but in the long term, you're serving others because you're showing up as a better version of who you are. And then finally, practice, practice, practice. Self-care is not an event. It's a process or a practice. It's something that you do on a continuous basis. 
that goes for positive things as well as negative things. You know, so I've often heard it said, you know, it's not one donut that's bad. It's one donut every day for five years that can mess you up. Well, it's the same, same thing with self-care. It's not just doing something once or, or, you know, really grinding for weeks on end and then taking a day off. That's not going to do it. It's going to be something that you do consistently, daily or weekly, to make sure that you regenerate yourself. You know, think about this. Think about this, is when you're embarking on those activities and you're practicing, that sometimes we can get a little down on ourselves if we miss a day. But here's what I tell myself and I tell my clients. Commit to those activities, and if you miss a day, don't beat yourself up. Just don't miss two days. <laughs> Just don't miss two days. So there you have it, my friends. There are some ideas for how you can embark in a greater sense of self-care. Knowing that when you make a list and that you are you're anchored in your calendar and then you practice it, it just becomes a regular part of your life. And what I'm going to encourage you to do is this, is you might think that there's a selfishness about that. But what I can guarantee you is when you take the time to feed your soul through whatever self-care activities you choose, you're not only going to feel better about yourself, but you're going to show up as a better version of who you are so you can better serve the world. So thanks so much for listening, everyone. Hope you found this useful. Again, if you liked it, please like, love it, share it, make comments. And this has been Chris Natsky with Black Belt Leadership Speaking and Coaching. And we'll see you next time on the Mind of a Champion Tip of the Week.